In the first two parts of this series, we fired up the Bat Computer and explored every Batmobile design between 1950 and 1997 that resulted in a scale model kit. We saw how the design transitioned from a Studebaker on steroids to a mod 60s hot rod, and finally into a neon encrusted roadster that probably would have been more at home in a Las Vegas stage show than cruising the mean streets of Gotham City. If you haven't watched them yet, links to both videos are in the description below. In this, the final part of my Batmobile series, we're going to take a look at the grittier and more grounded takes on the car that have appeared after Batman and Robin was frozen out of box office success and put the franchise's prospect on ice for almost eight years. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. So open up the secret panel behind the bookshelf, activate the rickety elevator behind it, we're heading down into the Batcave one last time to look at the history of the darker, grittier Batmobile models here on Scale Icons. Eight years after Batman and Robin seemingly hammered the last nail into the coffin for the Batman franchise, Warner Brothers greenlit a complete reboot. Where Tim Burton went gothic and brooding, and Joel Schumacher went flamboyant and campy, director Christopher Nolan went gritty and realistic with his 2005 revision of the property, Batman Begins. This new realistic aesthetic was especially prevalent in the film's interpretation of the Batmobile. On the Tumblr? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. The Tumblr was supposed to be an experimental military prototype, repurposed as a crime-fighting vehicle. From Nolan's crude plasticine mock-up, production designer Nathan Crowley finalized the design by kitbashing a series of plastic models to come up with a final design. And I know when you hear kitbashing, I've got your attention. Eventually, they settled on a creation that resembled a cross between a Lamborghini and a tank. It's still a controversial design, with many fans preferring their Batmobile to be a sleek sports car with Batwings. Well, that definitely is not the Tumblr. Although it did preserve the two-seater arrangement, as well as the jet turbine exhaust that's been a staple of all Batmobiles since 1966. 2008's The Dark Knight was the second film in the trilogy. In an odd bit of synchronicity with 1992's Batman Returns, the Tumblr reappeared virtually unchanged, was destroyed midway through the movie, resulting in a transformation into a smaller vehicle. Instead of a four-wheel bat missile, we got a two-wheel bat pod instead. Several militarized versions of the Tumblr also appeared in the conclusion to the trilogy, 2012's The Dark Knight Rises. However, these weren't Batmobiles per se, as they were used exclusively by mercenaries working for the movie's villain, Bane. Bandai was first out of the gate in 2005 with their 135th scale, snapped together Batmobile. The kit was re-released in 2009 following a massive box office success the previous year with The Dark Knight. Aside from new box art, this re-release retained the snap-together assembly and soft resin tires of the original, but it now featured smoke gray windows and what Bandai describes as a special dark chrome plating on many of the parts. Despite the massive success of the entire Dark Knight trilogy, there wasn't another widely available licensed model kit of the Tumblr until 2013, when Mobius Models released their larger 125th scale Dark Knight trilogy Batmobile. Unlike the Bandai kit, this one was in a larger scale consistent with most of the previous Batmobile models on this list, and included the now standard vinyl tires. However, Unlike the smaller Bandai version, 
the larger size allowed for a more detailed and screen accurate cockpit. No bat pod option though. If you wanted a bat pod, you had to buy another model kit. Because it's all part of the plan. In 2016, Mobius models released their Dark Knight Rises Tumblr kit. Essentially, this is a repop of their previous Dark Knight Batmobile. But this time, the kit included extra parts to model one of the militarized tumblers from the movie. To set it apart from the Batmobile model, it included a resin figure of the villain Bane. No decals though. You'd have to mask and paint the camouflage yourself. Also, still no Batman figure. Unless you wanted to buy that Batpod kit separately. For a double dose of diabolical deception. Bandai partnered with Sideshow Collectibles will be returning to the world of Batman with his upcoming release of a new 135th scale kit, anticipated to arrive in May 2022 and to accompany their 1989 Batmobile kit. It's not clear if this offering is a new tooling or simply a repop of their original 2005 kit. However, it's being advertised as having a new matte finish, so it could go either way. At least the notorious dark chrome finish doesn't appear to be coming back. So what do you think? Does it come in black? With the Dark Knight trilogy complete, and Christopher Nolan uninterested in revisiting it a fourth time no matter how much money was thrown at him, Warner Brothers decided to launch their own cinematic universe to compete with Marvel. Zack Snyder was tapped to build upon a successful 2013 film, Man of Steel, and in 2016 he introduced Batman to this new shared universe with the awkwardly titled Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. With a new Batman came the need for a new Batmobile. What emerged was a collaborative effort between Snyder and production designer Patrick Totopoulos, who said he wanted to return to a gothic classic look that included the long hood and canopy of the 1989 design, and which brought to mind Batman's flowing cape. That rear turbine exhaust makes a reappearance, of course, but this time it's reminiscent of the exhaust of a race car. The final version lands somewhere between the 1989 design and the tumbler. This Batmobile would make a cameo appearance in a slightly different form later that year in Suicide Squad and return in a modified form in 2017's Justice League. And by modified, I mean it's got more guns. Because Batman's known for his love of guns. Wait, Batman doesn't use guns? So far, only Mobius Models has produced any kits based off of this design. In 2016, they released a 10-inch long, 125th scale kit that was arguably the most accurate model of a Batmobile ever produced, as the CGI files used to animate many of the stunt scenes of the car on screen were used to manufacture this model kit. In 2017, a Suicide Squad Special Edition was released, essentially a repop of the previous year's kit. This time it included a few extra parts to recreate the slightly stripped down version that appeared for all of six seconds in that movie. Unfortunately for completists, a version including parts to model the Batmobile as it appeared at the climax of Justice League has yet to materialize. So, if that's your goal, your only choice at the moment appears to be either scratch building or kit bashing.
Although Snyder was able to release his own four-hour cut of Justice League on HBO Max last year, which, by the way, is almost as long as part one of the series, Warner Brothers has effectively shut down his vision of a shared DC Comics cinematic universe. A Snyderverse spin-off Batman movie that Ben Affleck was set to direct and to star in fell apart when he quit the movie. It seemed like Batman was finally dead. Luckily, director Matt Reeves was hired to resuscitate the project. The result is The Batman, a film that is probably my most anticipated movie for 2022. The trailers look absolutely amazing and are really the reason why I've made these videos. This Batmobile is a complete departure from anything we've seen before and is reminiscent of the muscle cars Batman drove in the 1970s comics. Concept artist Ash Thorpe came up with a design that's more realistic than any previous iteration, but which also looks just unique enough to be at home in any comic book movie. In a recent interview, director Matt Reeves said this of the inspiration behind the design. The Nolan films established the Batmobile as a tank which was a brilliant idea. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if this guy's a loner and a gearhead and fashioning these things by himself? Taking parts of other cars and kit cars? So it's recognizable as a car this time. But it's like a muscle car. One that he's made himself. Unfortunately, other than Lego releases, toys, and a ridiculously well-equipped one-tenth scale radio-controlled car from Hot Wheels, no scale models appear to be planned. However, as we've seen with many other kits on both of these lists, one is bound to appear eventually. you just got to be patient. Well, hey there. Can you tell I recorded this in February? Anyway, I was wrong. There is a kit of this Batmobile. It's from Bandai. I stumbled across it while I was editing part two of the series. I don't know much about it other than its scale, it's molded in black, and it features, of course, rubber tires. But judging from these photos, it's exceptionally well detailed, which is what I'd expect from Bandai. It looks like it's already on back order at Hobby Link Japan, so if you want one, you're gonna have to wait a while. But hopefully another manufacturer will come out with a version that's in a larger scale. 135th is just a bit too small for my taste. It's sometimes hard to believe Batman has been around for more than 75 years in pop culture and that so many variations of the Batmobile have resulted in so many amazing scale model kits. Don't forget to check out my other videos, including parts one and two of this Batmobile series. If you enjoyed this one, please click that like button, and while you're at it, click the subscribe and the notification bell so you'd never miss a single video. You've been watching Scale Icons, and I'll see you at the workbench.